Uh, but first off, today, because this is apparently the most exciting thing going on, is we're going to take a look at the Weapon X kits uh, that were revealed by the Envoys. We're going to be looking, I'm going to be looking at Mobile Gamers. A video so uh, you know shout out to mobile gamer of course he shouts me out from time to time uh, so we're gonna be taking a look at his video and then we're gonna go over it and discuss it and I'm gonna commentate on what I think that I'm seeing and how I feel about the kits and I think there's two questions that I really want answered by the end of this and that is a is this team new player friendly now I know that <laughs> Omega Red has a legendary on is a legendary character, so I don't know how player friendly that is. Uh, but in terms of I guess the releases, we have Silver Samurai that we know is going to campaign event character, and uh, we don't know about Lady Deathstrike, so we'll see. She's a, she seems a bit underwhelming to me. And whether or not this team has any use outside of war, it doesn't seem that Lady Deathstrike really looks that great to me. Uh, but I've, once we look at the Silver Samurai kit. Uh, and the reworks to Wolverine and Sabretooth. I, I doubt that Sabretooth probably will, but Wolverine and Silver Samurai is kind of what I'm curious about. And whether or not they'll be viable outside of war. Because everyone knows how I feel about war, and I don't really care too much. I care more about Doom Raid, I care more about, you know, Alliance progress on a daily basis. So I'd like to be able to answer those and figure out, do I want, you know, I'm probably going to invest in at least in Omega Red. Am I going to be investing in the others? So hopefully we can answer that by the end of today. We there we go. Silver Samurai. Okay, so basic. Tachyon slash transfer one counter from primary target to self. Okay, so Heroes for Hire definitely have a lot of counters, right? Uh, that's with Shang-Chi, I'm pretty sure. Puts all those up. Attack primary target for 250% piercing. Gain plus one counter up to a max of five. Okay, so is he getting two? Is he getting two counters? So transfer one... And then he gains another one, so he's gained two? That's what it sounds like. The attack gains 300% extra focus. I guess that's the focus to kind of counter their resistance, right? Per charge, they get a certain amount of extra resistance, I'm pretty sure. Special Executioner Slice. Samurai. Uh, okay, let's jump ahead of it. To a maximum of five. Oh, 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 Passive. Heck, we're going to go okay. over... To there we go. Energy costs three out of three, so this is available on turn one. I, mobile gamer's head's in the way, so I'm not sure if the ultimate is also available on turn one. Gain taunt for two turns, so we do have a tank for Weapon X. This is actually really good, and I mentioned this a little bit in my Discord chat, but the reason why this is good is because a lot of their passives and stuff related to war is war only. It's not war offense, it's not war defense, so this does actually probably allow them to be a war defense team as well. So they are flexible, and I do like that, because that's what I liked about Doc Ock, was that there was that option, you know, <laughs> not as many people really invest in the wider Sinister Six, but I did like that option that you had to either make them war offense or war defense, so this makes them a little bit more flexible, and with a taunt, and, you know, just by seeing this alone, I think allows them to do that if you so wish to do that. And then it makes me wonder if you do put them on war defense. Well, uh, obviously you're going to need Infinity Watch to counter Heroes for Hire, but then what's going to counter them if you have the full team? So that makes me wonder that. Gain three counter. Wow, three counter th and three deflect or just one deflect up to a max of five? This is uh, not super clear unless it's just one. I feel like it would have said one if it was just one. So I wonder what that is. Apply defense up to uh, for ter two turns to self and all Weapon X allies. Holy poop. <laughs> On a cooldown of three? It's a good thing that this isn't like Cap Sam's uh, taunt, which gives uh, defense up to everyone, regardless of their, their tag. Uh, wow. Cooldown of three and you get two turns. This is like almost always. It's going to be always up almost. Wow. Barrier self and Weapon X allies for 20% of this character's max health. Flip counter to on the primary target and then attack. So this is great. It's a taunt skill with a buff and damage. That's like power creep to the 10th degree here. And this is the, the kind of creep that we've been seeing more. Is this kind of, uh, you know, like a three skill in one. You know, previously, if you looked at characters for over a year ago, you'd get like just taunt and a buff, right? Now you're getting taunt buffs, barrier, damage, flipping, you're getting like four or five steps in one skill when before it was just like two. <laughs> so you're getting a lot more now with characters and that's good. 
Uh, attack primary tar and, and just really just kind of emphasizes that power creep. Attack primary target and adjacent targets for 250% plus apply offense down. That's really nice. Flip the counters. Yeah, this is really good. Oh, ultimate Bushido Barrage. Okay, so this is available on turn one. So just to be clear that if you are using this team uh, on the war defense, let's say, that means that the alt is actually going to go first, not the taunt because the way the AI works. And that's a little bit unfortunate because it, it I, I kind of, in some ways, dislike the way that they have two skills available on turn one but you kind of want to use one like if, if they were on the war defense i think you would probably want to use the taunt first uh i think but we'll see so primary target for 200 percent piercing and apply stun okay cool if charged bonus attack primary target for 200 percent piercing gain plus one bonus attack for each charged up to a max of five bonus attacks then remove charged okay Gain 1,000% extra focus, that's a lot. <laughs> characters killed by this attack cannot be revived. All right, we got Kestrel 2.0 here. Uh, the last character I believe to have a non-revive attack was probably Kestrel. This attack is unavoidable and cannot be blocked. Okay, so that's good. So what it means about cannot be blocked means that, uh, you know, you're gonna get the full amount of the damage, which is really good, of course. And they have a lot of block in general on Heroes for Hire, which is at least offensively, what they're probably going for however like i said i think there's some validity to this team possibly for war defense you know so it'll come down to whether or not you have infinity watch and if you don't have infinity watch you'll need to use these guys on war offense but if you do have infinity watch you could continue using them in war uh offense and then switch these guys to war defense maybe you know once you get omega red that could be really interesting passive way of the blade i guess this is the charge stuff we need to so it looks like he's okay on turn gain plus one charged up to a maximum of five on turn if this character has charged and is not stunned this is <laughs> oh my god how many bullet points is on this this is like phd reading this is like one two three four five six seven eight eight bullet points holy crap you know like this reminds me of of heroes for hire because when heroes for hire they had this whole like lengthy ass passive and this is what it looks like oh my god do i have to read this on turn, if this character has charged, is not stunned, and has any negative effects. Okay, this is... And we have to consider this in order of operations as well. Because I kind of feel that this has a very good potential to be bugged. Because you guys know... You guys know that they really don't implement things properly a lot of the times. Um, so, on turn, gain plus one charge. Okay. That's simple. Next step. On turn, if this character has charged... Which you probably will, right? Because previously on turn, gain plus one charge. So why would he not have charged? Exactly. In what situation would he not have a charge then? <laughs> Is what I'm wondering. Uh, I guess, oh, sorry. I guess, it, well, no. I was going to say if it was removed from, uh, removed by Silver Surfer. But even still, he's getting a charge on, stun on turn, right? So why, in what instance would he not have a charge? Uh, and has any negative effect. Is not stunned. It has any negative effects. Remove one, then it should be flipped around, right? The, the, it should, the text should be flipped around, I guess, if that's the case. Uh, has any negative effects? Remove one negative effect on this character for each charge and one charge for each negative... Hold on. Can somebody, maybe somebody needs to explain this to me. Um, so he loses a charge for clearing negatives? But he needs the charges to do the damage on the ultimate? So, sort of a bad thing? Hmm. I'm lost already. So this is a bad thing, right? You don't want him to clear the charges. So you don't he, you don't want him to have negative effects. This is what I'm what I'm getting from this because if he has negative effects, he's going to clear it and then lose the charges. That's what it sounds like. On this character or any weapon X allies turn, barrier self for 10% of this character's max health. That's a lot. And this might actually lend him for once the only character perhaps for fortifier because Fortifier does actually improve the max amount of barrier, I believe, in the blue Fortifier. Um, so he might be the single only character that you might want blue Fortifier. Because <laughs> most of them you don't. On this character or any... So this is a lot of barriers. Every time they, they take a turn, there's 10% given to him. So that's pretty, pretty big. On attack, gain plus one charge. Okay, I should have I should have read further. So when he gets hit, he gets a charge. Okay, so, you know, he's building it up quicker. I should have waited to the end before talking about too much. Uh, this character applies heal block 
for two turns with x 500% focus on all attacks. Okay, that's pretty pretty big. All of his attacks apply heal block for two turns. That's pretty nice with 500% extra focus. That should overcome the amount of resistance that they get for their charges. I would think. Gain plus 40% armor. Weapon X allies gain 40% armor, of course. And then it looks like resistance. 40% resistance. Gain 10% chance to assist. To, sorry, T0 assist. He's he's getting 10% chance to T0 assist. This better be a, uh, a typo. Uh, if it shows up in the game as T0 assist, I'm going to be very concerned. Uh, but, you know, maybe it might. You know, what if this shows up in the game as, as T0 assist? Plus 10% chance per Weapon X ally. So he's getting 50% chance to assist. So that's pretty good. If this character has four or more Weapon X allies, that's the entire team. Just to be clear, the four does not include himself. It's, it's, it's him and four others, so it's five. Reduce assist chance for all enemies by 25%. So... This reduced assist chance, that's that's definitely aimed at Colleen Wing, assisting less. So I guess it goes from 100% to 75, because it is 100% in, in war defense, right? Thank you, Baconator. Baconator, 20 for the subscribe, uh, sorry, the follow. In war on spawn, gain five charged. Okay. All right, so I had to read to the end. This is like a PhD reading session here on kits. That's true. Maybe you might be able to fight Infinity Watch on the defense as well, actually. On spawn, gain 5 charge up to a max of 5. <sighs> okay. I mean, I was wondering why that's necessary to include. Because you're getting 5 anyways. But I guess in, in war defense. So if you put this team on war defense, the charges do actually carry over into the next battle. Just to be clear, in case you guys didn't know how that works. Uh, so this could be a valid war defense team. And I like that. I like that there's options to what you want to do. It doesn't have to be a flat war offense or war defense. I like that it could be both. This could be a really powerful war defense team because he's actually a solid tank. Gain 40% piercing per charged. That's up to 200% additional piercing damage per charge. Reduce the assist chance of all enemies by 100%. See, I need to finish reading the text. There is so much here. PhD. I don't have a PhD in reading text. I have a master's degree, yes, but I don't have a PhD. I'm not quite there yet. So there's a lot of shit here in this passive <laughs> that I needed to fully read. Okay. So in war, it's reduced the assist chance of all enemies by 100%. This is bonkers. So it just eliminates Colleen Wing's assist right off the bat. Eliminates Nebula's assist if you're fighting uh, Infinity Watch. This is pretty crazy. So let's let's rewind a bit. So we know that he's on spawn gaining five charges. Let's say for war um, for war offense sake, you know you're controlling him. He's getting five charges. Sorry, he's getting five charges. Has two hundred percent extra piercing on his first attack per charge, right? And then he uh, applies heal block for two turns on all of his attacks. Gets 500% focus on all of his attacks. And quite a bit more. Let's let us let's, let, let's rewind a little bit. Okay. So 200% additional piercing damage. Let's keep that in mind. So the primary... Tar so Bushido Barrage, 400% piercing on turn one. Plus apply stun if charged. Bonus attack for... Okay, so... Okay. Here I'm confused. So, it with five charges, that was 200% additional piercing. And then on the text, it says, if charged, bonus attack, primary target for 200% piercing. So we're getting 400% piercing. We're getting 400% piercing on the primary target, plus apply stun with five charges. And then if charged... A bonus attack for 200 piercing. Is he also doing 400% piercing on the bonus attack as well? That's what I'm wondering. And then he gains additional attacks per charges. For up to... So five more bonus... It's like... Is this a seven hit attack or a six hit attack? And is it getting 200% piercing on every hit? That could be a whopping... 400% per hit. On turn one on war. That's like over 2,000% damage. That's a lot. Just to put this into context, Storm's alt 
with 25 charges or 20 charges or whatever her max is hits for 2000 ish percent on the ultimate and that's not piercing <laughs> this is piercing so this will do more than storm's aoe at full charges not that anyone uses storm anymore but this is like the biggest comparison that i can make and what's interesting though is that um it doesn't clear death proof so if there are death proof he's gonna have to hit them a bunch of times and that's why the bonus attacks are there right um but it's it may it might be possible that they might still survive depending on how many stacks of death proof they have uh because it doesn't clear the death proof beforehand that being said uh it will it's gonna do a shit ton of damage and it, it and it's not blockable you can't block it so they're gonna take a huge crap ton of damage the question is how many stacks of death proof do they have could they actually survive this maybe uh but it's gonna be a crap ton of damage. obviously it's gonna depend on how big your silver samurai is and i think in this team without even seeing the wolverine and saber tooth rework i think this is what we're gonna need to look at big silver samurai first off uh, next to Omega Red probably as well, but Silver Samurai seems to be way better than Death Strike in my opinion. This kit is bonkers, and he's going to be a campaign event character, so this is going to be a really good character to pick up. I think even I think he's, he's going to have value outside of War, actually, because his kit is huge. He has such a huge kit. Uh, it's unfortunate though that he doesn't really have a villain global mutant. Okay, uh, you're probably not going to use him in Dark Dimension outside of cap sam because i think cap sam's probably still better with the synergy for secret avengers for that kind of stuff but he's got a really good kit could you use him in the doom raid instead of kitty pride maybe he's got some effing bonkers kit here if his stat if his base stats are huge i wonder if he could replace kitty pride in doom raid he's giving himself defense up for two turns at least with a special so the, the, the survivability will be there for him it's whether or not beast and the other you know can keep him alive i guess because that's really the only healing you'll probably get but it looks really good i think what do you guys think i i i think it looks really i think it looks really crazy uh the special on a cooldown of three really low even the ultimate on a cooldown of four is pretty low i would say and the charges even outside of war you're getting charges every time you get hit that's possible clown i i, I didn't actually think of that necessarily but this is scopely let's be real do you it, it might work that way it might not it might not work how either of us think you know i was kind of thinking that it would be you know it would um calculate when you do the attack so if it calculated when you did the attack then that would be 200 percent piercing for all the attacks it's possible it could go down by 40 percent per per swing but we wouldn't know right a good way to test this would be is the damage the same or not right this would be the best way to t test silver samurai is when you do the bonus attacks it's piercing right so it should be the same amount of damage if if the numbers drop then you're right if the, if the damage stays the same, then I'm right, <laughs> I guess. So we'll have to really take into account the numbers. But what's great is that we have the, at least we have the training mode for war. So when Silver Samurai does come out, we should be able to test this. You know, we, we should be able to sandbox test this to see what is actually the case. And maybe that's why they added that. So that we wouldn't just, you know, so we would have a way to test war characters to see if they're bugged. And really, this comes to us being the master beta testers once again and figuring out if the character's effed up or not. I think that with Omega Red, you could beat Heroes for Hire without the rest of the team. I actually honestly think that you could make a hybrid team with Omega Red and Kestrel and Surfer and probably still beat it, you know, <laughs> without because of the trauma and the heal block. I think that's entirely because Silver Samurai, uh, sorry, Silver Surfer applies heal block. So I think that you could, as long as you have the trauma and you have a heal block. So I don't know if they can do it without Omega Red. And then it comes down to the question, well, if you're not getting Omega Red, is this team worth investing in or should you skip? And what I mean by skip, I don't mean like skip shard farming. I mean just put them on the bench until you can get Omega Red. 
or you know take them up to gear tier 12 and, and and prep them but don't orange gear them and that's what i want to know that's what i want uh you know hopefully to share with you guys once i figure that out i guess but that's what i want to know right so is there any there's probably not going to be footage out there that shows it without omega red because why would they do that right why would they share with us if it's possible without omega with omega red or not they're not going to share that right because then people will buy them less of course and they'll make less money okay people need to understand if they followed my channel long enough when i say skip a skip for me i i've i've defined this in the past soft skip hard skip i don't think hard skip exists anymore soft skip exists and this means that uh you know obviously you know get as many shards as you can but you know you only need to take them to like gear tier 12 and then prep them or whatever you want to do with them it doesn't mean you need to build them hardcore and uh so a lot of the, some of these characters for weapon x might be a soft skip uh but they might still have some use and i'm curious if silver samurai can be used in other uh parts of the game he has a pretty bonkers kit so we'll have to see lady deathstrike less enthused about her i think she might be the i think uh lady deathstrike might be the polaris of uh you know of, of of a team you know that she's like that war only character uh i don't think she has a lot of value outside of that so uh yeah i mean you could do like a, a hybrid version but at, the, at that point if you oh surfer instead of omega red uh, maybe possibly but that's what i'm saying is that silver samurai is probably going to delete someone you might still be able to do that without omega red um the question is, will you be able? How many will you be able to clear after Omega after Samurai kills somebody? I think he might just kill someone and then it's going to fall apart, and then it's going to become like a two shot. You know, at that point, like if you have a fork, a foursome Weapon X, it's going to be a, a two shot. Use two, two foursome Weapon Xs to to get through the team. I think that's what's going to happen. Like right now, like this is just happening, right? You, okay, so I, I I think that's everything that I want to see here. It looks really good. But again, we don't have that question answered yet. Is it viable without Omega Red or not? And that's the question that I pose to everyone, <laughs> to, to the game. You know, is this is this a viable team without the big member, which is Omega Red? I don't know, but I'm thinking no. I'm leaning towards a no. I'm leaning towards that Omega, without Omega Red, they're not going to be able to do the same things. They're not going to be able to clear Infinity Watch reliably. They're not going to be able to clear, um, uh, they're not going to be able to clear Heroes for Hire reliably. And I think that's where we're probably going to be at. Can they kill them at all? Maybe. Like I said, you know, Silver Samurai has a really good kit. His ultimate looks really powerful. And I don't think you need Omega Red to do that kind of damage. So if Omega, uh, sorry, if Silver Samurai is built up high enough, you might be able to just slam one member of the heroes for hire kill them but you're still gonna have four left right so you're gonna have to deal with it slowly i think that's what's gonna happen i think that's what's more likely but let me know uh what you think and uh we'll have more to talk about this of course as the patch rolls out and as we get to play with the characters a bit more very um very curious about playing with silver samurai but i know that since i don't spend i will most likely have to wait but I'll wait and see and hear what other people have to say about Silver Samurai and testing in the new war sandbox mode. And hopefully we can we can learn some more about that. So that's all for just now on the Weapon X kit reveal. There was a lot here, uh, but yeah, it seems quite interesting. I'm just a little bit skeptical, that's all.